Yeah, so you kind of touch on what my next question was, which is like conversely, which companies or segments might be especially challenged in 2021? Yeah, anything that you might want to Yeah, add? yeah. So I think, I think in general, everyone will be challenged for at least one quarter when they lap the pantry stocking that we saw earlier this year. So I think that's really uniform across all players. But I think you get to next year, I mean, you know, the competitive environment is still very intense out there. I mean, during this pandemic, all the elite all have opened up more stores. Um, you know, obviously these other specialty chains, such as Whole Foods, Sprouts have also continued to expand as well out there, the Dollar Store channel. So I think it's going to be an even more competitive environment. So the conventional channel, which has struggled to grow pre-pandemic, where, you know, maybe the best players like Kroger and Albertsons can grow like top, I think you're going to be back in that dynamic. But now with an even more competitive backdrop and Amazon as well being a bigger player. Um, so, so, I, so I said, yeah, it would, be, it would be that conventional channel and probably the smaller regional players out there and maybe some of the smaller independents. I think that's where we'll see more of the pressure points in the industry. But I think it's really gonna be more, uh, you know, lapping the comparisons and then, and then the second half of the year. I think that's where you'll see the challenges. All right. Last question. Then. What, what do you think would be the biggest long lasting change in retail that, that comes out of the pandemic? If you had a yeah. perfect fall. <laughs> Yeah, so I, you know, I, I guess it's not going to be surprising, but clearly the penetration online. Um, so, you know, I think a few years ago, uh, you know, people thought maybe by 2022, you'll get to 10% online penetration. And in some cases, we're almost there already. So I think the pandemic has really sped up the consumer shift to online purchasing for groceries. And historically, there's, you know, in, consumer concern in buying fresh items online or even buying center store. And now, I mean, I think, I think many of us are now have tried online ordering, and I think I think that's going to continue going forward. Um, so I think the retailers like invest, tailor, and improve that offering, whether limiting out of stocks, make it easier for consumers to change orders that they already placed. I think that's where you really see some of the separation and the winners and losers, and those that can actually really enhance and improve that experience to to perfect it, similar to what retailers do today in stores. Great, great, some great insights. Um, any other thoughts before we go, or? No, I think, you know, I think in general, I mean, this grocery boom has really been great for the industry. Uh, some of the weaker players have been able to aggressively pay down debt. Uh, they've been able to make investments in, in their omni-channel platforms, which I think in general is going to make for, you know, a stronger industry longer term. But unfortunately, the dy dynamics out there, so if you look at the restaurant industry, you've had a lot of closures out there. But unfortunately, grocery, um, I'd say if anything, my concern is capacity has actually increased because not only do you have all the brick and mortars that are still operating out there, but now you have um, Amazon and others that have added online capacity. So as I look at to next year and beyond, you know, the risk is that as you see more people go back to restaurants, um, you're going to have some just natural pressures at food on at for at home food spending. Um, so you know, so we are we are a little bit more cautious as I look, you know, going forward past, past the pandemic on, on the space. Great. Well, great. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining us today, Crash. Thanks. Thanks, Michael, for having me.